So tell me, what is your favorite part of the whole quilting process? My name is Fallon and today I want to share with you five different ways to quilt your quilt and these are all going to be easy methods that you could do on your domestic sewing machine. So you don't need a long arm, you don't need anything fancy, just five easy ways that you can quilt your quilt. If you watched my video where I revealed how many unfinished quilts I have, you know I'm going to be getting a lot of quilts done. <laughs> I just simply have to. So with all of those quilts piled up and pretty much most of them tops, some of them even basted, I'm sure you can tell my favorite part of quilting is not actually quilting the quilt. I really enjoy piecing the quilt. That is my favorite part of the entire process. I even enjoy cutting the fabric. I enjoy pressing all the seams, trimming down blocks. I love all that. But when I am finished with the top, I do not want to have to baste it. I do not want to have to quilt it. And I do not want to have to bind it. And with all these quilts, I just, uh, I honestly can't pay to get them all quilted by a long armor. I wish I could. It is just not in the budget. So I am going through and finding different ways to get these quilted that is easy. So it's not something that I'm going to stress about and just have fun with getting them completed. But today we're just going to be going through some of these methods for getting a quilt quilted very, very easily. So the first method I'm going to show you is actually one of my favorites. I've done it on a lot of different quilts and it's just matchstick quilting. Just straight lines across the quilt and you can put them pretty close together. It just makes the quilt look yummy to me. I love the way it looks. So the quilt I'm going to be doing this on is this quilt here. It is actually about two years old. It is a quilt that I actually showed on my channel. It's the first puzzle mystery quilt that I did with cotton cuts. So this was the sparkle and shine um, quilt along and the colorway I chose was pearl. So this was a fun quilt. I just, after I finished it, I was done, I felt like. <laughs> so I'm just gonna straight line quilt it. I'm gonna put a walking foot on my sewing machine and what I'm going to use, my husband actually makes these and it is a acrylic ruler that is about a quarter inch thick and so it's really hard for the walking foot to come up over it and break a needle. But I use this as a guide to do the stitches so I don't have to mark the quilt. I don't have to put tape on it. I don't have to do anything but just sew. And that saves me a lot of time, which makes me happy because quilting these isn't really my favorite. I wanna to get to piecing a new quilt. So the faster I get this done, the faster I can move on to another project. So this has some grips on it so it doesn't move around on the fabric on me. And then it has a handle, which I like to use sometimes to kind of hold it steady, um, loop my finger around it. And then it has one inch lines across it. So this is four inches wide, eight inches long. It's perfect on the table on my sewing machine. And it just makes this so much easier for me. So let me show you what I do. All right, so I have my sewing machine set up for quilting. I have my walking foot on, I have my stitch length increased to where I like it, just under three. And I have my sewing machine cleaned. I always try to clean out all the lint and oil it before I quilt just to make sure everything is running smoothly. So you can see I have my quilt all pulled up on me because you don't want a lot of drag when you're quilting. And what I'm going to do is get my first line of stitches going. So I'm going to kind of use seams on the quilt as a guide. If the, you don't have any seams on your quilt that you like that you're going to want to use for a straight stitch across it, I'm doing the width of the quilt. Then you might want to mark your first line. So I am just going to start sewing. And what I do, because I don't want to put this ruler right up against the foot, I actually use the plastic side of the walking foot. Um, I just find that that just gives me a little extra security to make sure my ruler doesn't go under the needle and break a needle or anything. So I'm just gonna sew next to the ruler using the ruler as a guide. I 
I tend to go slower when I am quilting because I want to make sure I have nice even stitches. Keep adjusting the quilt as you go. If you're sewing machine has a setting where when you stop sewing your needle goes to the down position use that that'll keep your spot when you need to adjust so i remove needles as i go or safety pins <laughs> So I have been pin basting my quilts a lot recently and that is because I'm trying to save money. A spray base costs so much and when you have this many quilts that you want to finish that I have, it really adds up. And you can really feel the drag whenever you aren't holding your quilt up well enough. You can tell that it gets harder to move the quilt through the machine. So make sure you're adjusting, make sure it's not falling off your space, make sure you have it up on you and it's not dragging down. Everything you can do to prevent that will be so helpful. <laughs> The quilt always feels so much bigger here at this point. I'm like, this is a nice size, just kind of throw size quilt, but it feels like it's miles long when you're doing a straight stitch across it. All right, there we go. Our first line is done. And I don't think I mentioned that I am, well, you can see, I'm using Dove Gray thread for this. Thought it would be perfect on this quilt um, with all the grays and everything in here. So now I'm just going back to the start. So going all the way back over here. And then what I need to decide is, do I want to space them one inch, two inch, do a variation of them? I think I'm probably going to do the one inch. So I'm just going to line the one inch line up of my ruler on the threads I just stitched and then I will stitch next to it. So I start off the edge of the quilt over in the batting and I do that so I don't have to sink any stitches when I'm quilting. And then I'll just sew the next line of stitches. If you want your stitches closer you can always use the side of the foot you're using and get them really close together um, there's a lot of different things you can do to line that up so that you don't have to mark everything if you don't want to so i think the one inch will give me a good amount of stitching look really nice and it's going to be a little bit wider than one inch because of the distance between the edge of my ruler and where the needle actually is. It'll probably be closer to one and three quarters of an inch. Um, I can measure it later, but your foot might be different. So it'd be different for me, for you if you're using the same type of ruler I am. But doing this, I think I'll be able to get this quilt done pretty fast since I not happen to mark all these lines. All right, so now I have two rows of stitches done. And I'm just gonna go through and get all of the quilting done on this quilt and show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so here's my puzzle mystery quilt all finished. The straight line quilting really looks so good on it. It's kind of a modern feel to it from these fabrics, so I feel like the straight line quilt quilting was perfect for it.
The next easy quilt design that I want to share with you is the crosshatch design. And I use that design in the quilt behind me. Some options like in the quilt behind me, you will have seams that you can easily follow to bring the design together. Some quilts won't have seams that line up to get the crosshatch design really easily. So you may have to draw lines on your quilt. Now, on the quilt that I am going to demo this on, I do draw lines from corner to corner in both directions to start out the crosshatch design. Now, once I draw those two lines out going in each direction though, I'm just going to use the straight line quilt lock to get the rest of the lines in for me. And this will space them for me evenly so I don't have to spend a lot of time drawing them out. Now, if you don't wanna use a ruler like this, you can definitely draw all of your lines out spaced how you want and just stitch along them. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine, show you where I stitch along one of the lines I drew, and then I will show you how I use this straight line ruler to space them out. So here I'm gonna get my initial stitch line in by stitching right across the, the line I drew from corner to corner on this quilt. All right, so now that I have that initial stitch line in, I need to decide how far apart I want to space my lines. I don't want it to be really far, so I don't wanna use the whole four inch spacing of this ruler because then I won't get a lot of quilting in this really small quilt. There's a lot of really small pieces here. So I'm probably gonna go with one or two space apart. I think I'm gonna go with two because this is going to be probably a wall hanging in my house or a table topper. So I don't think it's gonna get washed a lot. And I think if I space out a little farther than the one inch marking, it'll be fine on this project. So I'm gonna go to the second line on this ruler, line it up on the stitches, and then just sew right along the edge of the ruler. So as I sew, I'll just move the ruler along. And then after I get that row of stitches stitched, I will just go and do the same thing. I'll line up the second line on this ruler and stitch the next row. And then after I complete this direction of the quilt, I will go to that line that I drew going in the opposite direction, stitch along that, and then follow the same steps sewing out from, from that initial line. All right, so here is the crosshatch design on the quilt. It turns out so good every time and really comes together very fast. So here you can see it a little better all of the stitches going in both directions and I think it really adds a lot of nice texture to a quilt in a very quick manner. So the next straight line quilting that I want to share with you is just a square that kind of spirals out and I'm going to show that on this quilt here. It is a square quilt and it'll come together very fast but I want you to think about the quilt that you wanna put this design on. If it is a larger quilt, it might be easier to just do the square spiral in a smaller block and then repeat it in different blocks throughout the quilt. 
And then if your quilt is a rectangle, but you still want to do the spiral on the whole quilt, you might want to elongate your spiral so that it fills the quilt in the same shape that your quilt is. So this one is a square, so I am going to keep the spiral coming out in a square manner. So one thing you can do is sketch out this spiral as it comes out from the quilt. I am just going to use a ruler to bring it out and I'm okay if it is not perfect. So I'm just gonna start along one side of the center piece and then just keep working out from that until I fill the entire quilt. It'll come together really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna first border around three sides of the square. So I started right here. And then I'm going along the third side, but I'm gonna go a little bit past it probably a little past one of the lines on this log cabin. And I'll be able to use those for a guide. I'm gonna see if that's far enough. It might have to go a little farther because I kind of want this line on my ruler to line up at the side of that. So that's gonna be my gauge. probably three more stitches. Perfect. And then again, I'm gonna to need to go past the side of that center. So, I uh, probably two more stitches. And that'll be perfect. And then I can sew along this side of the ruler. So that line is lined up right along the side of that center stone on this quilt. And then again, I can kind of use that to gauge. I think I might be good. I probably need one or two more stitches. All right, and then I'm gonna sew along this side. And I'll have one more side that I need to sew along where my line's gonna be lined up on the cornerstone and then I'll be moving out to the next stitches. Seems like I'm starting to get pretty good at judging how far I need to sew fast. And then this time I have these stitches that spiraled out here, so that's where I'm gonna be measuring from now. And it looks like I may need one more stitch, but I'm gonna check. I think I might be good. No, one more. See, you start to get pretty good at judging it. <laughs> All right, this one's tight, but it'll look fine at the end. All right, so I probably need one more stitch and then I'll be able to line up along this line of stitches and sew along there. And I'm just gonna keep spiraling out from the center just like that until I get all the way to the outer border of the quilt.
All right, so another quilt is quilted. I absolutely love how this design turned out and it suited this quilt perfect. So it's honestly probably really hard to see the quilting on camera, but like I said, it started here and just spiraled out. But on the back, since I just used a solid back, you can see it a, a little bit better and it really looks so nice. I love how it turned out. Whew, I've been doing a lot of quilting today and my hair is getting wild. But let's move on to the next easy straight line quilting method I wanna share with you. So again, on this quilt, I marked lines from corner to corner. So here you can probably see them a little better, but the lines are going to corner to corner and they're meeting in the middle here. If you have maybe like a quilt that is a rectangle, you could still do this. You may just have more elongated Vs. So what I'm gonna do when I get over to the sewing machine is I'm gonna sew right along both of these Xs. And then I'm gonna choose one of the segments here. And I'm gonna put the side of my walking foot right along the stitches and stitch right through here. They're going to be close together and I'm just going to keep repeating that, putting the walking foot side right along the stitches and make some V's here. And then I'll go on to the next segment and do the same thing, make some V's within here. I am really excited about how this quilting is going to look. I think it's going to really bring out the star and really make this little quilt shine. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is sew along those X's that I drew. All right, and so now that I have that initial X sewn in place, I'm gonna put my walking foot the side of it right up against the stitches and just start following to make my V. Now when you get to the intersection, you're just really gonna have to gauge <laughs> eyeball how close you think you need to get. You can look and see how far the stitches are apart and kind of judge how close you need to be. Now, if you feel like drawing all of these lines in to get it absolutely perfect, you can definitely do that. I'm fine with just eyeballing it and making sure it's fairly close. Does anybody else just find their hair all over all their quilts? <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep doing that on this section and when I finish it, I'll move on to the next section and do the exact same thing and complete all four of these segments. Looks close. I think this second section is going to be wider every time, and I'm just okay with that. All right, let's keep doing this. All right, so here is that quilt all finished. All the quilting is done on it, all the Vs, and it looks amazing. Here it is closer up, and you can see all of those thin stitching lines through here really add a lot of texture to this quilt. I love how it turned out. So maybe I lied a little bit because I kept saying straight line quilting a lot. and Maybe I should have said line quilting, simple quilting, but for this final quilt, I wanna show you some wavy line quilting. So not really straight lines, but I think this technique is fun and very freeing 
because you just kind of get to have fun. You don't have to worry about anything being perfect. Just move the quilt along with some wavy lines and have fun with it. I think this quilt will be perfect for it because it has little pinwheels on here and they remind me of wind. So I feel like the wavy lines will look like wind. I also put this on my April showers quilt. I think that's what it was called with the raindrops. And then I also used this technique on my Christmas candy quilt. So it's so fun to just have fun with this and it's super simple. So I'm honestly just going to go to the sewing machine, start somewhere in the middle and just quilt across here. Just do some wavy lines. You can go as high as you feel comfortable, as wide. You can keep them a little closer together. However you want to do it, just have fun with it. They're not meant to be straight at all, so just don't worry about that. So like I said, I'm just gonna start off the quilt and just move the quilt with my hands to get little waves throughout it. I honestly think this is the easiest quilting method if you're doing it on a domestic sewing machine because you don't have to try to line up things straight. You just have fun. So I got one line of these stitches done and then I'm just going to go back to this end. A lot of people like to sew in the opposite direction um, as well because they, um, they say that it'll help your quilt not get wonky. I've never seen an issue with it so I'm just going to come over here and um, go to the same end and start again. You can space these out as far or as close as you want. All right, so I just have a few more rows to go. I'm just gonna finish this off and I'll let you take a look. All right, so another quilt all quilted, quick and fast with just some wavy lines. This comes together just so cute and it is also very, very fast to complete and get a quilt finished. So those are five different ways that you can quickly quilt a quilt with lines straight-ish lines, <laughs> but I think they're all fun and definitely very easy methods to complete a quilt. Now, if you would like some more ideas for quilting lines on your quilt with say a walking foot or just your regular piecing foot, I would definitely recommend to check out this book. I thought it came in very handy when I was learning how to just quilt my quilts. There's a lot of great ideas in here and tips. You'll find a link to this book down in the description below. Now let me know in the comments what is your favorite way to quilt a quilt on a simple domestic machine. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!